Hello dear listener please subscribe to our channel enjoy watching. You ever have one of those moments when your entire world flips upside down in the blink of an eye? Like, everything's fine, perfectly normal, until suddenly, it's not. That's what happened to me, and let me tell you, nothing prepares you for that kind of punch in the gut. It started on a Tuesday. Yeah, I remember the day. It was one of those unremarkable afternoons when you're just grinding through the workday, counting down the hours till you can head home, crack open a beer, and relax. I'd been running my own architecture firm for about five years by then. Things were good, steady clients, decent projects. My wife, Rachel, was the same as ever, busy with her real estate gig, always on the phone, always closing deals. I thought we were solid. Married 10 years, two kids, a nice house in the suburbs. We weren't perfect, but who is? Then came the box. I found it sitting on the porch when I got home that afternoon. No note, no sender info. Just my name scrawled across the top in thick black marker. I figured it was a misdelivered package or some kind of marketing junk. But when I opened it, man, my heart stopped. Inside were photos. Dozens of them, all of Rachel. But not just her, Rachel and some guy, cozying up in places I didn't recognize bars, hotel lobbies, some out-of-the-way cafes I'd never been to. And they weren't just friendly photos. These were the kind of pictures you couldn't misinterpret. Her hand on his thigh, his arm around her waist, their faces inches apart like they were the only two people in the world. I felt the blood drain from my face. My chest tightened like someone had punched me. At first, I thought it was a mistake. Maybe someone was trying to blackmail us, or this was some kind of sick prank. But the more I looked, the more undeniable it became. That was Rachel, and that was definitely not me. Now, here's the thing, I didn't lose it right away. I didn't storm into the house, throw her things on the lawn, and scream for answers. No. I'm more methodical than that. My mind started racing, piecing together the clues that I had been too blind to see before. The late night showings that went on longer than usual, the extra business trips that always seemed to pop up at the last minute. The way she'd been distant lately, brushing off my attempts to spend time together with excuses like work's just crazy right now or we'll plan something next weekend, I promise. I didn't confront her that night. Instead, I stashed the box of photos in the garage, behind an old stack of paint cans, and poured myself a drink. I needed to think. Revenge wasn't even on my mind yet. All I wanted was to understand. How long had this been going on? Who the hell was this guy? And most importantly, why? The next day, I started digging. I'm not a tech wizard, but I know my way around the internet, and I had a feeling this wouldn't be too hard to uncover. I logged into Rachel's work laptop when she was out showing a house, she never bothered setting up a password. Emails text messages, calendar appointments. I hit the mother load. The guy's name was Darren, a contractor she'd met through one of her clients. He was married too, with two kids of his own. Nice guy on paper. But the messages between them? Let's just say they weren't about drywall and renovation budgets. They'd been meeting for over a year. A year. My stomach churned as I read through the conversations, some explicit, some emotional. Rachel was telling him things she used to tell me. Confiding in him, sharing jokes, even complaining about me in ways that stung more than I care to admit. Darren seemed to be everything I wasn't, spontaneous, adventurous, exciting. It was like reading a script for a different life, one where I didn't exist. But I did exist, and now I had a choice to make. Do I let this tear me apart? Do I confront her and demand answers? Or do I do what no one expects and take control of the situation? I chose option 3. See, here's the thing about betrayal, it opens up a world of possibilities. Rachel thought she had all the power, that she was in control, but she had no idea the game had just started, and I was about to rewrite the rules. Over the next few days, I played the perfect husband. I smiled, I kissed her goodbye in the morning, I helped the kids with their homework like nothing had changed. 
All the while, I was planning my move. I knew Rachel and Darren had another meetup coming up, a weekend getaway in Napa, according to the messages. A conference, she told me. Cute. I let her believe I was none the wiser, even helped her pack. Have fun, I said with a smile as she kissed me goodbye and rolled her suitcase out the door. The second she was gone, I made my first move. Remember those connections I mentioned? Well, one of them happened to work in cybersecurity. He owed me a favor after I helped him design his new home. I called him up and asked for a little digital help. Within a few hours, we had hacked into Rachel's phone and Darren's too. I could see everything, texts, call logs, even their locations in real time. I knew exactly when and where they'd be. Now, it's not like I was going to drive up to Napa and catch them in the act. No, that would have been too easy. Too obvious. I had something more, creative in mind. The first part was simple. I made a call to the hotel they'd booked and upgraded their room to the honeymoon suite. Complimentary champagne, chocolates, the whole nine yards. I wanted them to feel comfortable, like they were getting away with it. Meanwhile, I set up a few surprises. I had cameras installed in their suite, discreet, high-quality ones, hidden in places no one would think to check. But I wasn't just interested in watching them. I wanted them to see themselves through other people's eyes. The next step was crucial. Rachel kept all her important contacts backed up on her cloud, and she never bothered to change the default password. Classic mistake. I logged into her account, and within minutes, I had access to her full client list. High-end buyers, CEOs, socialites, people with money and power. And Darren? His contacts were just as lucrative. Contractors, developers, family friends who trusted him. They all thought he was a stand-up guy. I wasn't planning to just expose them, though. No, this was about something bigger. I drafted an email with links to the videos from their weekend getaway. I didn't hit send right away, though. No, that would have been too fast. I wanted to build anticipation. Instead, I scheduled them, one by one, set to release over a two-day period, slowly unraveling their lives. I hit send. It was Saturday afternoon when the first call came in. Rachel's boss. I watched from the comfort of my own living room as her face went pale, her hands trembling as she tried to explain what was happening. Darren was blowing up her phone, trying to figure out what the hell was going on, but it didn't matter. The wheels were already in motion, and there was no stopping it. Rachel tried to cover it up, to act like it wasn't what it seemed. But the evidence was right there, in HD. Meanwhile, Darren's wife? Oh, she got her own private delivery, a neatly compiled package with all the best clips, personalized just for her. But I wasn't done. You remember that family trip Rachel's parents were planning? The one to Napa? Well, I might have nudged the dates a little to overlap with her conference. Imagine her surprise when she ran into her mom and dad at the very hotel she was cheating in. Darren's wife? She was there too, with the kids in tow, looking for answers that were already playing out on every screen in the hotel. Rachel's parents hadn't planned to be in Napa that weekend, but I made sure they got an invitation. Darren's wife? She had no idea what she was walking into when she brought the kids along, thinking it was just another business trip. But surprise, surprise, it wasn't. By Sunday morning, the fallout was complete. Rachel came home, a shell of herself, trying to hold on to whatever dignity she had left. But it was over. I handed her the divorce papers without a word. I didn't need to explain. She knew. Darren's life? Well, let's just say his business didn't survive the scandal. No one wanted to work with a man who couldn't keep his personal life out of the gutter. His wife took the kids, the house, and half of everything he owned. And me? I walked away clean. The best part? They never even saw it coming. If you leave a comment, tell us what you think about the story you heard, it's important to us and will help us find and tell stories that you find interesting. Thank you for watching us.